This training video is brought to you by K Alliance. K Alliance provides high quality instructor led training videos for desktop, IT, and soft skills. Visit us online at www.kalliance.com to sign up for your free seven day trial. Be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you for watching, and we hope you learned something new. Real videos, real learning, real success. So a quick look right now at diagnostic logging in SharePoint. So from a troubleshooting perspective, if you're really trying to go after a root cause of a problem and what event viewer is giving you is not detailed enough, then we can turn on our diagnostic logging. So let me just show you how to do that. As we bring up our central administration, we're already in the monitoring area of central administration. So right down here under reporting, you'll notice configure diagnostic logging. This will enable and configure advanced logging settings. So if I click on that, you can see right here that we can specify uh, certain areas that we want to turn on diagnostic logging for. Now, every one of these has a certain area. And we're basically saying we want to trace some of these elements. So access services, if I check access services, I want to trace all elements of access services. Now you'll see here, use these settings to control the severity of events captured in the Windows event log and the trace logs. As the severity decreases, the number of events logged will increase. Okay, so as I look at these under all categories, access services, here's access services 2010, uh, document conversions, e-approval, uh, education, info path, maybe it's search elements that I want to um, trace. So we're looking at informational information and um, a medium trace level. Okay, so let's go ahead and check off search as an example, which checked off all of the sub elements as well. Okay, let's go ahead and scroll down. And we can specify here the least critical event to report to the event log. None critical error warning information and verbose. Now we want to be careful with verbose because we're talking about a lot of information to store into our event log. We can fill it up. And the same thing with the trace log. What kind of information are we going to trace? We can enable event log uh, flood protection. And then we can specify where we're tracing to. Where do we want to store the logs? This is a common location. But we could change the location if we wanted to. And then for how many days, how many number of days do we want to store those log files? and we could strict the disk space usage if we needed to. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK, and it's going to work on it and set up our tracing. Now that wouldn't be something that I want to uh, leave in there for a particularly long time. This would be something that I define to turn on tracing for a minimal amount of time in order to analyze the problem, and then I would come back in here and turn it off. So come in and get rid of anything that I have uh, any tracing that I have enabled. So that's a little bit about how we turn on diagnostic logging and to do a bit more verbose tracing in the event of a need to really troubleshoot root causes. We hope you enjoyed this preview video. Please click on the like button below if you did and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Be sure to visit us at www.kalliance.com to sign up for your free seven day trial today. You could learn a lot in a week.